Hi, my name is Alexa Libermeski, and I'm here to tell you about my. And I'm going to do that again because that sounded a bit like. <laughs> Hi, my name is Alexa Libermeski, and today I want to tell you about a book that I wrote for my two sons. It's called Princely Advice for a Happy Life. A very short history lesson. The Lubomirski family goes back 500 years in Poland, and it holds the title of prince. Over the last 500 years, my family members were philanthropists, statesmen. Uh, generals, um, politicians, right up until about the Second World War, and then everything changed. So I was probably the first generation to be born without any of the material things that my family had had for 500 years. Fast forward to 1986, I was an 11-year-old boy growing up with my mother and stepfather in Botswana. My mother one day told me, about my title and she said, you know, I want you to know that you are a prince. So as you can imagine, 11 year old boy, this is probably the best thing you're going to hear that day. But she very promptly followed that up with there's nothing left. There's no money, there's no riches, there's no castles, palaces, armies, collections of art, anything. So as a very naive 11 year old, I said, well, what's the point of the title then? And she gave me this answer, which stuck with me forever. And she said, if you want to be a prince in today's world, you have to be a prince in your heart and in your actions. So I didn't really appreciate the gravity of what she said until I had my own son uh, 25 years later. I wanted to tell him about his title, but not in the sense of like, you're a prince and you have a duty to act a certain way. I thought there was some, there was some romance in the idea of this title. And so I thought it was a good tool to teach my sons how to be better human beings and how to be how to, be, how to grow up to be good men in this modern, crazy world. I, you know, I go on the subway in New York and I'll sit there and I'll watch a young guy come onto the train and he's like this with his phone. And he's like that for the three stops and then he gets off. And those three stops, he didn't notice that there was a pregnant lady standing next to him who needed a seat. Or he didn't notice the girl three seats down who was trying to make eye contact with him. I wanted to teach my sons about how to hold on to that magic that there is a romantic way to look at life. So I made notes of all these sort of princely attributes, whether it was chivalry, courage, leadership, romance, love, and I sort of took all these notes and gave them a sort of modern spiritual twist. Your most powerful weapon is your smile. Use it to shed light onto any situation. So this is, this is a really easy one. I've, I, you know, every day, whatever job you have, you're going to have to deal with difficult circumstances, difficult people. I go in there and as soon as I know what the problem is, I smile at somebody. And it drops their defense. If you go in there with a smile and say, hey, how can we work this out? Then it automatically softens everything and it makes things easier to work out. Balance is the greatest gift that you can give yourself. Know that to succeed in life and to be truly rich, you must be successful in all areas of work, love, and family at the same time. We get so tied down in work or in our ambitions and a lot of the most important things that we have in our life, we tend to sort of put at the bottom of the priority list. Whether that's family, whether it's loved ones, whether it's a girlfriend or a boyfriend or your kids, there's always that danger in today's world that it's all about ambition, 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 and work, 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 and all of a sudden you look back and you've missed out on some of the most precious moments in life that you can never get back. So there's also, there's also sort of, you know, practical advice. This is, this is one that my mother gave me when I was a younger man. She said, when dining with a woman, give her the seat facing out with a view of the restaurant, whilst you take the seat facing in. She will be free to enjoy the view and the people, but your attention, your attention will be on her and her alone. Which I think is a pretty genius thing, because if you're a man with a wandering eye, you don't want to be looking at all the other people in the, in the restaurant when you're supposed to be focused on this beautiful girl in front of you. This book was just meant to be one copy on my son's bedside table, but after two years of convincing from my wife and our good friend, I gently pushed it out into the world and it has now been translated into six languages and raised tens of thousands of dollars for, for the charity Concern Worldwide. Even though it has the word Prince in the title, it has nothing to do with being royal or being aristocratic. This is just about being a good human being. Like I said, it all goes to charity. The charity is called Concern Worldwide, which you can check out just down here. Click, click. 
Go and buy it for your brother, your boyfriend, your sister, your girlfriend, your grandfather, whoever you think needs to uh, learn about a little romance in today's world. I need to reread this every day because this is my checklist of how to be a better man. Thank you very much for listening. It's a wrap. Yeah? Yep. Great. Thank you for that. <laughs>